So one of the, what I wanted to do today is talk about radios and communication off-grid or for emergency purposes and um, just throw out a couple of ideas for you. Uh, so where I am now is approximately a mile from my place. There's like a main road, I call it the upper, the upper road, but anyway there's a road that comes all the way down past here. And uh, I can actually see the tops of my buildings and maybe my antenna but uh, you know it's way off in the distance about a mile point being it's it's I've got good line of sight from here and just to try to give you a an idea of the rest of the country there's pretty much nothing else there uh, across the valley there I have access to one of the highways I will occasionally get truckers on the CB channel, on the channel 19 on the CB, and uh, I will occasionally get some uh, communications on the GMRS radios as well. About the only time you really get much radio traffic out here is during hunting season. Uh, over in that, I'm not sure if the road will show up, but over that way, at the end of that road, towards the top of that hill, there's another uh, homesteader that's just recently moved in and started building something. And then over that mountain, or pretty much on that mountain that I can see there, I've got some other friends who've been here for a long time. Anyway, that brings me to the radios. And so I can put this down without breaking it. So most of your hunters, fishermen, outdoorsmen, one of the first things they do is they go on, you know, when it comes to communication, they can try and get themselves a little, um, uh, they call them CB radios, two-way radios. Basically, they're a um, short-range, low-power, I think they're 477 megahertz. Let me double check that. Yeah, 460 is one of the channels on there. It's channels 462.712. Anyway, so there are, uh, I think it's UHF, and um, they are really good. They're nice and clear, FM. So if you have line of sight, you can get good communications with these things and actually even with the low power levels they can actually go quite away uh, on this packaging here and don't always believe this packaging that says the mountain to valley up to 16 miles with these radios uh, that's probably fairly optimistic however like out across the valley that i just showed you uh, i have actually heard communications and actually made some um, sketchy communications out to about 10 miles so not too bad and that's that's line of sight I can actually you know see right across the valley there's nothing in between me and there uh, however because they're line of sight they suffer terribly from up in this hilly country so once you get up in this hills Literally, if I went down there, you know, to the bottom of that the hill I'm on at the moment, I'd no longer be able to get my place since only a mile away. Um, you know, here in the, it says in the neighbourhood, up to half a mile. In some cases, you might be lucky to get a quarter mile. So, that's the drawback on it, of these little radios. I still recommend them. Very handy, very cheap, and... Um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, the so it's got the model number there, MG one six three TPA. I bought quite a few of these radios, and um, I really like them. Uh, FRS and GMRS. So I think, and I may be a little bit wrong on this, but I think the FRS Family Radio Service 
and the GMRS, don't know what that stands for, are basically using the same frequencies, you know, channels. However, the GMRS is supposed to be licensed because it they will generally use a higher power level. So these radios here are probably, because they're sold commercially without a license, I'm thinking you can, uh, I'm thinking the power level is very low. I'm not sure if it'll actually tell me on the back there. Do, 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 do. Anyway, it, it probably has the power level in the instructions there. I'll have to look it up at some point. But I'm thinking they're either half a watt or maybe one watt. I think that's the, the maximum allowable as an FRS radio. So that brings me to next thing that a lot of preppers are using and I highly recommend is these um, Bayafang UV fiber radios. Uh, now they can be programmed with the GMRS, FRS frequencies and what you can do now this is what you can do but it's not something you should do unless it's an emergency um, but you can So this is a, a repeater module for the Biofung radios, and it will, like I'm a licensed ham radio operator, so I can use this with ham frequencies as long as you know my license is, uh, um, you know, covers those frequencies. And what I can do then, you know, is set up a repeater. Now it's also possible, and I'm not not uh, saying you should do this except in time of emergency um, you know, such as you know I think Hurricane Katrina or something like this would have been really handy there would have been a lot of people around using these you know, simple FRS walkie talkies and um, you can actually program this to talk to the Bayafangs and make the repeater work. So you can get an FRS repeater system set up very easily and um, with these. Like I said, it's for emergency purposes. It's just something you could do. So I've got a couple of these, these uh, uh, repeater boxes, simple repeater boxes, so that if I ever do need to set up an emergency FRS repeater system, I could do it. But, um, so what does this do? You see the paper? So first off, let me draw a little mountain here. All right, the first radio is down there. Second radio is down there. So because it's line of sight with these radios, my radio's here, down the bottom of the hill. I'm not going to be able to talk to the radio that's over here. However, if I was to put this repeater set, repeater box up the top of the hill, kind of like where I am now, I'd be able to talk to there and then talk to there. So that would give me communications, you know, over a hill, mountain. Um, it also would give you a range extension. So depending on the conditions you're in, let's say you've only got a maximum mile range, you might have a mile range to the repeater and another mile range to you know, the second station. So you've extended your range. A couple other things it can do if uh, um, So this is a this is a hill. And it's kind of the same thing, 
in that uh, you know you might have run radio here another radio here you've got a hill they can't talk to between those but uh, they can talk to here talk to there and get communications that way it's also a way to what's the word if radio direction finding was an issue um, it, it's a way to keep your um, radio transmission very local yet still getting the range you need so uh, this would be like I said that's a hill this would be down in the valley that's kind of kind of where I am now so if I needed you can see those valleys down there if I was up in those valleys I had a repeater out in that far valley I could technically hit the repeater from there and then coming back up over here to these other gully, uh, um, valleys and I could probably hit those as well so yep. lots of possibilities and uh, I, can't remember. I think this repeater module cost me 30 bucks something like that and Well, that's just what I wanted to point out and demonstrate the possibilities of using a repeater module with the UV5R bail phone in order to get you a, uh, a FRS repeater for use in emergencies you know, such as, I think, Katrina, uh, the fires that we had out here. And... Yeah, well, it could be search and rescue too. Um, you know, because like I said, a lot of the a lot of the hunters are using these all around here. You know, we've got a lot of country. A lot of the hunters are using these radios, but yet they get up in the the hills and the gullies, and they just don't work. You know, being able to find them, something like this could be set up very quickly. Uh, so yeah, to get this working, it's really just a matter of plugging in like that a little bit of squelch. You know, you've got to have the frequency programmed in. Uh, you'll have a... Uh, your receive frequency is going to be different than your transmit frequency. So you might be receiving on channel 17 GMRS and you might be... Um, sorry, channel 7 GMRS and you may be transmitting on channel 4. So there's two different frequencies you'll need to have programmed in. And... All in all, the setup's quite easy. It was, wasn't too difficult. Maybe a little bit of messing around with your squelch and uh, um, privacy codes might be another thing that could cause you some problems if you had to set it up. And uh, yeah, I think that's all I needed to say. Oh yeah, um, so this is, you can literally go plonk these out, keep the, you need to keep the radios as separated as possible. That's why there's all this extra wire there. Uh, Another way to separate them even more is to actually put an external antenna that would screw onto the top and separate those antennas. So you get you get plenty of separation. You don't have as many problems with the repeater functioning. And of course, if you're making a semi-permanent setup, you may have solar panels or you know charges and solar panels running the whole thing. So that's it.